This is uh, a longer version of a short I put out about a cervical cancer PSA, but uh, basically I'm just going to go a little bit more into detail about why it's very important to do everything you can to try to prevent cervical cancer. Um, I now know a little bit more about it because I had it, and I will just want to help anyone who uh, might be at risk of it. The way you can get the virus is, yes, through sexual intercourse. Uh, however, I had heard that there is actually, there are other ways to get it. It's actually a very easy virus to get. Um, so even if you've never had sex before, it is possible to still have the virus, and it is possible for that virus to then turn into cervical cancer. If you are eligible, please, please, please get the HPV vaccine. I believe there is an age limit for it, so if you're in your 20s, I believe you're still eligible for it. I don't know the cutoff age. If you are eligible, please ask your doctor if you can get it, because that is one of the number one ways to prevent cervical cancer. Again, a lot of people already have the HPV virus, and for the most part, it is harmless because their body fights it off every time. But every once in a while, your body won't fight it off like mine didn't, and it will develop into cervical cancer or maybe something else I'm not sure. The only thing I know is that it turns into cervical cancer. I didn't have really any symptoms that would concern me enough to get checked um, until I started having some uh, bleeding during intercourse and uh, that concerned me. So that's what made me want to get checked and then that's where they found it. That's where they took a biopsy of my cervix and found out that it was cervical cancer. But for the most part, um, even though I had that symptom, for the most part, cervical cancer does not have a lot of symptoms. It does not show often, which is why uh, getting your pap smears and getting checked is really your only way to see if you have it or not. That goes on to my next point of it's really, really important to keep up with your pap smear checkups. Make an appointment now or at least call your doctor and see when you should be getting your next one because that is the only way that they can find it. Now, if you've never had sex before, you should still get checked because, I, like I said, they, I believe there are other ways to contract the virus other than sex. So if, you're, if you've never had sex before, I think that doesn't matter and you should still get the vaccine and you should still get, check, uh, get checkups um, so you can make sure that you're okay down there. So really anyone with a cervix who is eligible for the vaccine and eligible to get pap smears. I'm not sure what the age is to start checking there. I don't remember when I started doing that, but when you're able to, just ask your doctor, ask your parents, because it's very important. Speaking of asking your doctor or asking your parent or guardian and see if you should get checked, I am also going to advocate for ending the taboo on anything that has to do with really women issues or women's bodily issues. Uh, we have come a long way to kind of ending that taboo. However, it's still there and a lot of people let that taboo keep them from talking about it and therefore keep them from getting checked and therefore they're the ones who get the cancers and the illnesses because they didn't want to talk about it. It's about your health. Let's just take the taboo off of it and talk about it because it's very important. The reason I'm also making this PSA type video is I wish someone would have really explained to me what happens when you get cervical cancer because it might have scared me even more and made me really a little more proactive in trying to prevent it, I think. I learned too late all of the things that are going, that are happening to me now because of it. And although I'm okay, I feel okay, and I'm glad I'm alive, and I'm very lucky to have survived it, for a lot of women, it would affect them greatly. For instance, um, as I mentioned before in my other videos, having any sort of cancer down there will probably affect your chances of future family planning. If you're planning to have biological children. If you have radiation, which is typically the treatment you get for cancers, the chances of your ovaries being irradiated and just rendered useless are just about 100%. You will 100% go into menopause. I'm just warning you that if you have future 
family planning and you want to have children, the best way really is to extract your eggs and freeze them because you will not be able to have children after that. For anyone else who is wanting to use their eggs, just be mindful that cervical cancer will render your ovaries useless and you will have to freeze your eggs. Menopause is 100% the outcome of getting treated for cervical cancer, again because your ovaries, if they are irradiated, that is what produces your hormones. And if you don't have hormones anymore, then you go into menopause. No one had ever told that to me, not that it was a proactive conversation ever, and only thinking of cervical cancer, bad, because it's cancer, got it, okay, but like what, why is it bad? We forget that there are long-term effects to these illnesses. Even if you treat the illness and even cure the illness, it still affects you even after it's long gone. So I just want to really come on here and give this PSA and warn people that cervical cancer is serious, even though it is considered a slower growing cancer. Typically, it takes about five years before cervical cancer becomes something that is fatal. From what I uh, was hearing from my doctors, about five years. So it's very slow growing, and that's why if you catch it, there's a high likelihood that you can cure it, so you'll be okay. But again, it doesn't mean just because it's a lower stage, like with mine, doesn't mean that it's not going to affect you long term. So I just want to implore everyone to do everything they can to prevent that. So anyway, that's those are the two main things that I have learned, and that I hope I can help anyone try and prevent this from happening because it's not fun. It's happening to me and I'm dealing with it and I'm still okay and I feel great, but it sucks. That's all I have to say for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.